Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest tonight is the one and only Dr. Orly Tates Esquire, a Senate candidate in California in 2012. She is the founder of the Defend Our Freedoms Foundation, but more importantly, she is the star of our most viewed video this month, I think. Uh, but also, she has really taken charge of the issue of Obama's origin. And for everybody who's ever had doubts and wanted to see the mainstream media take this issue up, given as much credibility as it possibly can, and properly examine the issue of whether Obama is a legitimate president or not, Orly Tates has been your champion. Taking this issue now to the Supreme Court, we're very excited to know that she is going to be back here in the D.C. area when that happens. But we have been... Uh, honored by sharing her, her company at this inauguration when she helped us pass out flyers that said, not my president, because when you see that Obama is illegitimate, for whatever reason you choose, you can't help but stand up and say, I am not going to comply, I am not going to go along, and for leading this particular strain of resistance, I am greatly honored to have Dr. Orly Tates on the show tonight. Ms. Tates. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, what an introduction. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I am, I am uh, you know, I, I, everybody's got, this is such a hot issue. And, and I don't mean like right now, uh, although I hope it will be around your case, but it, it's such a hot issue because it strikes at the heart of identity politics. And there, there are a lot of people who, who have been very critical of you, who have, uh, and, and there are a lot of people who have latched on to this cause. And, and of course, racism becomes a major uh, groundless accusation that gets thrown at anybody who opposes Obama. But there are racists in this country, and you do run the risk when you're opposing Obama of attracting people. And, and I think you've, you've borne that hazard well. Why do you think this is such a... a, a before we get into the, the legal issues and, and the grounds for this, why do you think this is such a contentious issue? Well, I think this is an issue, this is the issue that exposes the fact that we are, we as a nation are being run by a criminal enterprise. That's the bottom line. It really exposes how corrupt the, the top of the government in all three branches is. Um, I'm, uh, and you know, people call me names because they have nothing to say on the issues. That's the bottom line. Barack Obama himself, posted his tax returns online in uh, 2010. Nobody forced him to do it. Nobody made it up. He himself posted his tax returns. And either by his mistake, uh, uh, by negligence or his stupidity, he did not flatten the PDF file. And mm -hmm. thousands of people with Adobe Illustrator opened the file and could see his full unredacted Social Security number, his and Michelle's. And uh, right away, there was a red flag because it was a Connecticut number. And it's interesting, only last year, um, in, two, in 2011, uh, Obama has randomized uh, Social Security numbers. However, until he that did it in 2011, the social security numbers were assigned by states. His number, and, I, and actually I can state the full number because it's not his, it was already shown. This, is, this number is 042-684425. The first three digits, 042, uh, belong to the state uh, of Connecticut. Obama was never a resident of Connecticut, so it was a red flag right away. And a number of people ran it through E-Verify and SSNVS, and it showed that the number that, that the president of the United States is using in his tax returns is was never assigned to him. You know, this is such a crime. For this, he should have been kicked out of office and sent to prison immediately. And what is even more astonishing and what is even more frightening and appalling is that we have such level of corruption and dirt in our judiciary, in our Department of Justice under Eric Holder, among our U.S. attorneys, attorney generals and our congressmen, that such simple fact uh, is being buried is being buried by corrupt judges, is being buried by corrupt U.S. attorneys, corrupt attorney generals, and corrupt congressmen. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, I just recently filed a notice of default of Barack Obama 
because he was uh, sued, uh, I, I sued him on behalf of presidential candidates and presidential electors here in the state of California. He was supposed to respond within 21 days. He didn't, and I filed a notice of default. Within two days, I just saw nearly 55,000 in-bed views, 55,000, 54,600 within uh, two days. Uh, even less than two days uh, uh, of this uh, notice of default judgment of Obama. This is a huge issue. And the, the biggest issue, what worries me more than anything else, is that we have, uh, we have tyranny. We have such a corrupt regime that spans to our media, our Congress, all three branches of government, that I honestly don't know how we'll be able to, to, to fight it without absent people actually revolting the way they revolted in bloody revolts in, in Egypt, in Yemen, in Tunisia, and so forth. Uh, you know, I, I, in four years, I, I'm yet to find one honest judge. I'm yet to find one honest congressman. This is the problem. I have provided several courts and several judges with a sworn affidavit from one Jeffrey Stephan Kaufman, who was the chief investigator from the U.S. Um, Coast Guard and uh, um, chief investigator of Special Investigations Unit of U.S. Coast Guard, who stated in his sworn affidavit that Barack Obama's Selective Service Certificate is a forgery. A forgery. This should have been on the front page of each and every paper immediately. And it shows you that the same criminal enterprise that ha has put this puppet with all forged IDs and a stolen Social Security number in the White House is controlling all of our mainstream media because they are all committing treason and are being criminal complicit and cover up. Well, speak <laughs> speaking of the mainstream media coverage, there was a period in the uh, spring of, of 2009, when this issue did come up after Obama took office, and it really was uh, covered by the mainstream media, and they took the most ridiculous representatives of what was then becoming known as the birther movement and put them up and, and ridiculed them and, and kind of got past and dismissed the issue. But your case has been going on for a long time now. Can you start with the beginning? What is the story of, of this particular case that is now making its way to the Supreme Court? Actually, this this case, um, it came from the state of California, and it's, this is a case that I brought on behalf of several uh, presidential candidates. Um, one of them is Ed Noonan, who was a presidential candidate here in the state of California. So it's a, on, on behalf of electors and, and, and presidential candidates came from the Supreme Court of California. And, uh, and again, uh, the, the, the magnitude of corruption is unbelievable. When I filed it with, at the Supreme Court of California, they refused to even take the case. <clears throat> and what was shocking, that a clerk has sent the paperwork back to me saying that they're not going to even docket the case. I said, it's impossible. I mean, how can you do this? You're just a clerk. How can you take upon yourself to make such a decision? Uh, and she wrote to me, this is a federal case. I said, what? How, how is that a federal case? The defendant is the Secretary of State of California. How can you state that this is a federal case? And, and, and you know, I, I've been getting the most idiotic excuses everywhere in each and every court because they're trying to defend uh, some uh, undefendable, uh, something that just um, in incomprehensible. So the, the, they are forced to come up with the most idiotic excuses. And, and I remember I was on the phone probably for over an hour with the chief clerk of the Supreme Court of California until finally they agreed to docket the case. And I had to spend over $700 in filing fees. And then they d denied it right away. I'm sure those judges never even looked at it. Uh, we have another very serious problem. Uh, most judges have no clue what's going on. There are clerks that make uh, that they do the, the triage of the cases, and uh, we believe that the judges see the cases, but 99.9% .9 of the cases yeah. are never seen by the judges. Mm -hmm. I had a situation where I met Justice Scalia where I had a related case. I asked him about the case, and he looked at me with total bewilderment. He had no idea that there is a case uh, in front of the Supreme Court. Um, Here's another example. Um, just recently, the D.C. Court of Appeals 
has um, come up with a decision that a couple of Obama appointments were unconstitutional because they were made while the Congress was technically still uh, in session. It was not a full recess. And right away, I filed a motion for reconsideration, a motion to revoke the mandate in another case where I sought under Freedom of Information Act the application for that Connecticut Social Security number that Barack Obama is using. And I got, you know, the, the most idiotic response from the District Court and later Court of Appeals. Uh, I was told that I cannot get that application for that Connecticut Social Security number that Obama is using in his tax returns, and which is not his according to E-Verify for two reasons. A, because it's a private matter, and B, because uh, there is no public interest. Well, well let me ask that. In, in this case, you're able to bring a, a variety of evidence. What do you think is the most relevant? What do you think is, is going to be well, what you hope gets the most consideration here? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, to be quite honest, uh, I, I don't have much um, trust and, and respect <laughs> anymore in the, in the judiciary system. And what worries me is that um, the case is going to be heard in conference of all nine judges. So nobody knows what, what's going on there. Uh, the way they do it, you know, they, they claim that they actually discuss the cases in this conference. However, we don't know if they ever do that. Uh, as, I, as I said, as I talked with Justice Scalia, from what I understand, most cases are being summarized by those clerks who are very liberal. They just came from brainwashing of the liberal academia. All of those clerks come from a handful of uh, uh, very um, high connected firms that are connected to Obama. And they write the proposed opinions. And usually those judges just rubber stamp those opinions. Right. So uh, what scares me that um, during this conference, the judges wouldn't even know what's going on. They well, wouldn't even know what the evidence is at, there. At least you're in a position to get the official Supreme Court dismissal and brush off, and and you'll be the one that at least took it to that point, and that's 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 certainly, uh, you know, nothing to to dismiss as insignificant because, really, simply getting it, forcing the Supreme Court to even take a look at this. But now I I have to also put you on the spot here, uh, in terms of if what what is your theory if Obama was not born in Hawaii, where was he born, and and when did he move to Hawaii, or how were his early years spent? Well, uh, um, you know. I don't even need to provide a theory. I'm going to give you the facts. <laughs> um, it's not according to what I think and my theory. That's what the government of Kenya is saying. Um, I have provided the Supreme Court, <clears throat> as well as multiple other courts, with a, uh, a copy of the transcript of the uh, session, uh, October 25th, 2010, um, hearing at the uh, um, uh, of the Assembly of Kenya, where the Minister of, Re of Lands, James Orenga, st stated that um, they, they need multiculturalism in Kenya. And he said, look at the United States, they have multiculturalism. How else a young man who was born right here in Kenya, who is not even a native U.S. citizen, could become the U.S. president? Do we need more than that? Well, Probably not. It, well, it, it, but, at what age? But corrupt judges just, uh, just uh, are complicit and cover it all up. Well, it, it, the... Part of me that's that's skeptical is is always if he was not born where there is bad evidence, and I'm I'm not at all suggesting that the evidence is at all sufficient. I'm absolutely 100% with you in in calling out the inconsistencies, and and that's why I absolutely support you in in furthering this case and and waking people up because you know there, I don't think there are any shortage of reasons to find the government illegitimate. But giving people who use this as their one extra issue that gets them questioning or to live differently as a result of their attitude to government, absolutely important. But for any of the various theories, you would think that there would be a greater trail of evidence, that there would be, that, that there would be you know, more to suppress. Now, maybe in, in Kenya, if there's not so, uh, you know, not the kind of um, digital fingerprint that, you know, we expect everybody to leave, you know, when they're born in the United States or, or a record of everything, you know, maybe it's thinner, maybe it's easier to dismiss. 
but to me it's just like there it, you, the suggestion yeah, is, I, I is, is quite well, a conspiracy i got you listen i have presented the courts with over 200 pages full of evidence it's not the, uh, the evidence that we have is overwhelming. Let me give you an example. I have uh, I provided them with his school registration from Indonesia, where it states black and white that mm -hmm. his citizenship is Indonesian. Right. For that right. reason alone, the guy cannot be the U.S. president. And corrupt Cause, judges, cause, right, so cause, many cause, right, corrupt from, judges right. just cover it up and just uh, just ignore it in their uh, opinions. Right. And from, have, so from that piece of evidence alone, you can absolutely mm -hmm. say. There's either there there are only like three possibilities. Right, either there's either he's a criminal because he's because he because he forged his or he lied on his application, or or he's ineligible because he was telling the truth back then. Well, it wasn't. He was a little kid there. He was in Indonesia when he from five to ten. So his parents put he put this information. Moreover, I have provided the courts with his mother's passport records that were independently obtained by two different individuals. One of them is a U.S. Army intelligence officer that shows that his last name is not Obama. In his mother's passport records, he's listed under last name Soya Barker. In Asia, they have a tradition where they blend names. So from what I understand, they took his uh, stepfather's last name, Soya Toro, and his first name, Barack, and they blended it and came up with Soya Barca. How can we have, how could John Roberts uh, swear in somebody as a U.S. president and that the last name that's not even legally his? There is no evidence of him ever changing his name legally from Soya Barca to Obama. Moreover, uh, when his mother took him out, out of her passport, uh, it states that it, it, they crossed him out of her passport, and, and it states there that the person is removed from passport when he um, uh, pledges allegiance to another nation. So it is clear that his mother removed him from her passport when he got his Indonesian passport, and it and she swore to this under the penalty of perjury, and it was not uh, uh, it was notarized and certified by the chief consul of the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta, Indonesia. For that reason alone, he should have been sent to prison. He, he's been residing here in the U.S. for years under the last name that's not even legally his. The man is a criminal through and through. Uh, the Social Security number that he is using, we found out that belongs to somebody by name um, uh, Harry or Harrison J. Bonnell, B as in boy, O U, N as in Nancy, E L. And um, uh, we were able to find, uh, actually, it was found by an individual by name Albert Hendershot, who is an investigator, a debt collector. We found uh, records showing. <laughs> Both Barack Obama and Harry J. Bonnell listed under the same social security number and the same address, 5046 South Greenwood Avenue in Chicago. And I assume he used this name on, on, on his uh, address because of some manipulations they did with the purchase of the property. And, and I'm not going to even go into this. I, there are so many crimes committed yeah. uh, on so many levels. I mean, this man should be serving life in prison at the very minimum for what, everything he did. Uh, and it, what's interesting that it's not just him is that uh, the last time the, the were changes in the record were in 2009, and it shows that they were done by a relative, uh, Michelle Obama. So uh, clearly, Michelle Obama, I, I, either he used her name and her social security number, or she did it herself. And it was done in November of 2009, where I had a legal action against Obama um, here in California on behalf of Ambassador Keys. So he is involved, his wife is involved. Um, th th there are so many high-ranking individuals uh, who are involved. But moreover, we're seeing destruction of evidence, falsification of evidence. Yes. Yes. Uh, and as as I said, we're yet to find one honest person anywhere in the government, and, I, and I'm afraid, I hope it doesn't happen, but I'm afraid that this whole thing is going to end with the armed revolt because people uh, are waking up and seeing that we have just a mafia, like, like a Chicago mafia, criminal enterprise running the whole nation. Well, I hope by pushing this issue, at least, I, I think even if you simply get the brush off from the entire judiciary system, I think you might find a, a loose thread sooner or later. 
that's going to make whatever this corruption is unravel. Somebody's going to come forth. Now, we have some questions from the audience in the <clears throat> chat here. Mike? Well, the first question is, um, w is it available to get the transcript in the video that you're referring to? Is, is the evidence publicly available? Which, tra which transcript and which video? Uh, they didn't specify. The, the question from Peerable was, where is this transcript slash video she is referring to? Well, this is uh, available on the on the website, right? Uh, 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 maybe you know, maybe they might uh, they might be referring. I know, I think they, I know what they mean. They might me mean the videotape of a case we had in uh, uh, in the state of Georgia, where we present, you know, we presented all the evidence against Obama, and uh, there, Obama's attorney. Michael Jablonski uh, had stated uh, that he actually filed a motion to quash the evidence, uh, to quash my subpoenas, and it was denied. Obama was supposed to appear in court. He never showed up, never provided any evidence. He, there was a duty for him to, to uh, provide evidence of eligibility, and uh, somehow they got to the judge because uh, he stated that, that the evidence provided was not sufficiently uh, persuasive for him. Excuse me, Obama was supposed to provide the evidence that he is eligible, and uh, the, 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 it's, it's just corruption uh, everywhere, uh, everywhere you step, uh, everywhere you look. Um, and, you know, one thing, you know, I believe that the only way we can o overcome this, and, and, and let me explain one other thing that, that is extremely important. If we have such level of dirt and corruption in our judiciary that we cannot find one honest judge, one judge with with one drop of honesty, with one drop of integrity and moral values in his blood, if, he, if they can cover, cover up theft of the White House and presidency, they will cover up anything. It means that tomorrow it's going to be your house. It means that your house will be taken away from you. Your life savings will be taken away from you. The same corrupt judges can look the other way when, according to per ND, NDA, people will be sent to, to some FEMA camps. You know, uh, and, and I lived in the communist country. I lived in the Soviet Union. It starts when, when judges take away your civil rights, and then they will take away your economic rights. And then when there will be nothing left to take away from you, they will take the last thing that, that you have is, is your life, is, is your freedom. Mike. That is why we have to fight this organized crime that is running this nation today. We have an illusion of the rule of law. We have an illusion of, of legality. Uh, we have an illusion of elections. I provided the same corrupt judges and so many of them mm -hmm. evidence of an enormous uh, uh, elections fraud. Here in California, one and a half million invalid voter registrations. And I'm talking to the walls. They're all covering it up. Heavy they stuff. don't want to, to rock the boat, and they cover, they've covered up one and a half million invalid voter registrations in California. Wow. How, wow. how can we be represented in such corruption? It's worse than Egypt before, before uh, uh, Arab Spring. It's worse than Ye Yemen. Yeah. Next question is, um, what is the next legal step if the courts decide that it is indeed a fake but now irrelevant? Illegal, of course, but we've seen revisionist decisions before, like the 2000 election. You know, um, that case that is now in front of the Supreme Court <clears throat> is, is a stay. It, it was, uh, it's connected, uh, uh, it's application for stay. And uh, um, as I said, that came from the state of California. And even if they deny, uh, the way it works, first, uh, they, they have to say whether they will give, they will grant or not a stay and and, and if they don't uh, then i go to uh, uh read of certiorari so what people don't realize that there are a couple of stages in this case um even if they deny on the 15th they, they will have the answer on the 18th if they deny, it's not the end of the case. Then I actually write the writ of certiorari, and then I will get more of a response. The first one, usually, it's yes or no. The second one with the writ of certiorari, there is a chance of getting an actual opinion uh, of why. But by that time, I will have more cases that are, uh, that are moving through the pipeline towards the Supreme Court. I have seven cases going in multiple states. And as a matter of fact, the strongest one is in the state of Mississippi. That case I filed uh, a year ago 
and it's still going on. I have five attorneys that I'm facing who represent Obama, his financing organization, Obama for America, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, um, the Registrar and Director of Health of Hawaii, and, and, and the Commission of Social Security. I have five of them. As a matter of fact, Commission of Social Security uh, defaulted. He's in default uh, since beginning of November for, for over three months. And the judge so far did not render his opinion. I have filed a motion with the Fifth uh, Circuit Court of Appeals um, in uh, New Orleans, and I asked to expedite the case. And I explained it has to do with elections, swearing in of the president. We have uh, somebody with a stolen Social Security number that is being sworn in. And so far, the Fifth Circuit sits on it. And it's Fifth Circuit, it's Ninth Circuit, it, it's, it's all over. Uh, it's absolutely frightening what is going on on so many levels. Well, Orly, I, I think you're right about the state of the country, and unfortunately, most Americans would rather not pay attention to this. It's almost because it's too much for the average American to swallow that the, the system is this corrupt. But I, I, you're, everything that you point out as a conclusion from this, I have to agree with 100 percent about the state of the judicial system, about the state of the, the American people and the economy and, and what the uh, government is able to get away with. And I'm, I'm afraid that you're only going to be vindicated in hindsight, that it's only going to be after Obama's long gone from office, that someone's going to come forth and, 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 and be able to convince the people, hey, you are hoodwinked. But it really shouldn't take that. It really shouldn't. And I'm so glad that you're doing this work, that you're out getting this message out and, and helping people wake up by pressing this issue. And I wish you the best of luck. I hope your case is well. And, and you know, I, I hope that you're able to get as much media coverage as you can. We're going we're gonna yeah, to publish this I, video, of course, I, I, like, like we did with the other interview. I really hope that people take, uh, you know, r regardless of what their judgment is on Obama himself, whether he, we, we know he's lying about so, so many other things. It would almost be a shock if he wasn't lying about his <laughs> origin. But uh, for even people that, that can't come to grips with that because their they're, they're fragile psyches can't handle the truth, uh, I, I'm I, I'm I'm hoping that your work still reaches them in a way that makes them question well, I, you know, government. I do need to, uh, I need you uh, I need your listeners to help me. If people, you know, I need pe people to be there in front of the Supreme Court. The only way those judges would even know about this case if if they actually believe it or not, see people in front of the Supreme Court of the United States with signs between now and the 15th. We have two weeks. And it and it doesn't take too much. It doesn't take too many people. It can be one person, and uh, I, you know, maybe I can even help people with uh, paying for the signs and transport transportation and so forth. So We're trying to bring people on a bus. Uh, but if they actually, because the media is on the take, the, the media is corrupt and controlled and censored 100%. They're not reporting. Well, but if there are people standing there in front of the Supreme yes, Court yes. with big signs saying, Supreme Court, don't commit treason, so uh, what, what don't is the significance be criminal of, complicit, there is a chance. This is the 15th of February in two weeks. What is the significance of what's happening on that day? <clears throat> well, there are two things that are important. What I'm, as I said, what I'm asking, uh, one is on the 12th, there will be the State of the Union address. If we can have people with signs in front of the Capitol, uh, big signs and, and demonstrating that all nine justices of the Supreme Court are going to be there in the Capitol, are going to be going in, are going to be going out. They will see people with huge signs saying, Justice Roberts, judges of the Supreme Court, don't commit treason, uh, don't cover up Obama's forged IDs and stolen Social Security number. That's big. You know, that's, a, and I have also a case where the whole Congress is the defendant. The, the case that was uh, brought in California that's going on now, where Obama defaulted, Greenos at all the Obama, that's where the whole Congress is the defendant. Or, or, I'm, I'm sorry, so we, we just have a minute left here. Yeah. I want I want to get in on, on on what's happening on the 15th. Do you have a Facebook event for this? No, I don't. Okay. I don't have a Facebook event. I mean, I'm doing so much. Uh, we'll take care of that. I'm happy to support uh, you in this. Yeah, You're asking you for back. people to come out on the 15th but, to the Supreme Court. 
But you know what? We need to, we need to do it though even before the fifteenth because the conference is going to be early in the morning. They're not going to see it, uh, and it's going to be all decided. We need people before, like, like on fourteenth. We need as many people as possible on fourteenth with big signs saying, "Judges of the Supreme Court, don't commit treason, don't co cover up Obama's forged IDs and stolen Social Security number." I need as many people as possible with big signs, and possibly I was thinking of going to D.C. maybe even on the 12th and being there on the 12th, 13th, 14th. Those three days are going to be very important to be there, to be with science. If you can help me organize well, it. Well, you, pick, you pick a day. Which What day do you think is going to have the maximum impact? When would you like people to come out? Well, uh, the, tw the 12th is going to be very important because this is the date of the State of the Union address. As I said, all of the judges are going to be there. All of the media is going to be there. If we can organize the 12th, uh, maybe early in the day, uh, protests in front of the Supreme Court, uh, maybe having uh, some meetings uh, on the Capitol Hill and then just being in front of the Capitol with big signs. And and there, because the, the Congress has already received 22,000 signatures. You know, I have filed a petition with the Supreme Court asking the Supreme Court to uh, um, to immediately investigate Obama's forged IDs and stolen Social Security number. And I have now 22,000 signatures. Please go on the website orlytatesesq.com, O-R-L-Y-T-A-I-T-Z-E-S-Q.com. On the top right corner, you will see a picture of Statue of Liberty, and underneath uh, there is a uh, red uh, um button that says take action you you click on it and you will it will lead you to uh, petitions to congress and you can sign the petition it's very easy it takes a second to do so we have 22 uh, uh, thousand, 22,000 signatures within days. And uh, media, of course, is not reporting on that. But a lot of people are signing this petition for Congress to investigate, and they're doing nothing. Uh, they're coming up the most idiotic excuses. Just re recently, we received a response from Barbara Mikulski saying, well, multiple expert co experts confirmed um, that Barack Obama, uh, Barack Obama's birth certificate is uh, is valid. So today I have ser I served her with a subpoena saying, please provide me with those expert opinions because nobody has even seen the original. How could any expert say that this is valid? The only way an expert can can state that this is valid if he compares the the copy to the original and they're hiding the original. No, they they would not allow anybody to see the original because. <laughs> It's not there. They, they have not, nothing to show. Um, so Barbara Mikulski has uh, has gotten a problem on her hands, and it's not just her. So that's that's the biggest thing. I really need people to help me to be there in front of Capitol. I know a lot of young people are watching uh, your program, so if, if they can get in touch with me, they can email me at orly.tates at gmail.com. O R L Y dot T I T Z at gmail dot com. Please email me. You can call me if you can come and be there. Call me nine four nine six eight three five four one one, or you can send a comment on my website or litetsq dot com. If I can have a certain number of people, it doesn't have to be many. It can be just ten people, fifty people. Standing with big signs in front of Capitol, you know, congressmen, senators, judges will start taking notice. Well, Dr. Tates, thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Orly Tates. We'll get with you on the details, but we're going to put together a Facebook event for you. Make sure that we got the details and the links for that and get everything right. We want to be out there to support you and support this work and help wake people up. You don't have constitutional rights. You have natural rights. Yeah, it's critical. It's the, it's the blueprint of the nation. You could remain a sniveling little bitch, hiding your insecurity,